Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Fantastic Fictioners. The show where we take a look at fan fictions that are ah, less than fantastic. Today we're going to be looking at Invader Zim in Spa Vacation by Rasputin One. Yep. Oh, this is a one. Yep. Mm, yeah. This is a uh, this is a fan fiction that exists. You want to tell them a little bit about what this is kind of about? It's one that I had to read twice before I submitted it to him for the show because the process behind this goes is I scour fanfiction.net, I said it right this time, Nice. looking all over for the worst ones I can find. So I usually look up ones that have typically bad fanfiction like Invader Zim or uh, Sonic, that Pokemon, that kind of stuff. The ones that usually have a lot. Right, right. Or, oh, Steven Universe, another one. The ones that usually have a lot are the worst ones. So... I looked at Zim, and I found this. And uh, I had to read it a second time because I had no idea what was happening. I had genuine no, genuinely no idea. If you thought Arnold's big day was incomprehensible, this is like hieroglyphics. Yeah. I can't read any of this. This story is pretty hard to follow. Um, when we're editing, we'll try to do our best to make it as clear as possible. But it's going to be a difficult one for I that. I think it's safe to say that a lot of you guys are going to have the same reaction that I had when I was first reading it, which was, ah! Yeah, you know, I, you know, I'm a little, I was probably like, uh <laughs> Especially because it was late at night when you read it. And I think when we finished, we, one of us said like, what did we, re what did we just read? What was this? Yeah, that was, that was something else. So, we're going to go in, we're going to read it again. It's been a while. So, we, we preview these and then we let them sit. And generally with these, since we read so many and we have to select through them, we forget the basics of the story. I'll never forget. You'll never forget? Okay. Well, I forget a lot of it. <laughs> so it, it's kind of new for us, some of the lines, because we don't have this memorized. We're going to be reading off of okay. what we have in front of us. Here we go. Invader Zim in Spa Vacation by... Rasputin 1. Yeah, I hope that's how you pronounce it. So here we go. Driving on a road. Now, this is where it gets hard. So, second line, it gets rough. That's not a good sign. There is no character. Yeah, so this understand. thing is formatted like a script, unlike most fan fictions, which right. are kind of book-like. This is a script. I've seen a few of these, but here's the thing. When it's a script, you need to attribute a character to it. Otherwise, you can't really read it. So, oh, I have to go with the author's interpretation. So, this is an original character named Colin, and here's what he says. The... This is great! Just us men going to the spa to relax! Why did Zim have to come with us? Yeah. Now, son, your sister didn't want to go and Zim came by and wanted to go. I'm doomed! You're so right, Zim! <laughs> Wait a minute, isn't Professor Membrane Dib's dad? I didn't... So, Dib has two dads now? Professor Membrane and Colin. Oh boy, here we go. It's gonna be one of those grended upon situations, isn't it? Oh no. Zim laughs until they arrive at the spot. Well, Zim's gonna start laughing again. <laughs> okay, I'm done. No, I wanna, I wanna keep hearing this. <laughs> We're me? here. That's enough. I love it. Now, here comes another new character, Professor Membrane. Another. No, that's Professor Membira. Oh, Professor Van Buren. Okay, so I assume that this is Martin Van Buren. Yeah, that's uh, what I would assume, taking too. Taking on a professor role. Um, okay, let's put on robes. <laughs> After Professor Membrian, Dib and Zim put on the robes, they look at the schedule. Okay, so now it's Professor Membrian. So I guess Dib has three dads. Oh, boy. Yep, this is Grand Dinner Pod again. <laughs> How come both of the ones we've read so far have had three original characters that are pretty much the same person? You know, I think it's just a lack of creativity. And we haven't even seen the actual membrane yet. That's true. The frist on the schedule is a mud bath. Zim showing fear while Dib smiles in the mud bath. Come on in, Zim, so my dad can see you're an alien! Zim looks at the hot mud, bu mud bubbling. Then Professor Membrian shows up. Zim, why are you not in the mud bath? Uh, I have to use the bathroom. Yeah, that's what need. Okay, just come back at lunch. Bakus, we're leaving to go to McMeaties. Okay, I'll be back at lunch. That physically hurts saying that sentence. <laughs> 
Uh, Dad, can I go to the bathroom too? Okay, so this is Mem Brian. Mem Brian. Yeah, uh, let's the first time he's talking. Now, son, we're going to the steam bathroom. <sighs> oh no! <sighs> I have to get Zin before he does something bad. Meh, while. Zim leaves his robe on the floor as he goss searching for his clothes. I have to get my clothes. I can't be naked and Dip's father said we're going to Mimiti's at lunch. At the steam bathroom. Darn, that steam keeps fogging up my glasses, says no character. The narrator, apparently. But I don't think that was the intention of so, the story. Uh, no, it's the author's intention. They wouldn't right. have posted it if You're they right. didn't agree You're with right. it. You're right. I'm sorry, I doubted the author. And so there is no colon here, so this is just the narrator. Yep. Hey, Dad, I'm going to make more steam. Don't Please do that in the bathroom, not the steam room. And this is the narrator again, uh, because there's no character attributed to it. Okay, son, you can make more steam. So the narrator is also Dib's father? Oh, His forefathers? Okay, so I knew that you were supposed to respect your forefathers. I didn't think they meant <laughs> your forefathers. That was a good one. <laughs> Maybe that or this is all being told by Professor uh, Membiran Mem Mem because he has only said one thing, so maybe this whole thing's just a nightmare for him. He's trying to repress. That's why it's all disjointed. Oh, yeah, I could see that. Yeah, that or he just has four fathers. <laughs> Dib, make steam. Uh, wow, son, you fogged my glasses, son. Sees Dib's towel on the floor. Son. At the dressing room front. All I have to do is go in there and get dressed. But before Zim opens the door, Dib shows up. So he's a cross-dresser? Zim wears dresses? Yeah, that's what I'm getting from this. Sure, okay. Yeah. Zim, I see what you're doing. Doing what? You know. What? Okay, I'm confused. Going to get dressed. I don't want to be here any longer. Oh, that's what you're doing? Zim goes into the dressing room. Dot, dot, dot. Son. Oh, hi, Dad! Outside the spa, Professor Membrian, Dib, and Zim fully dress and going the THE car. So, they go to the THE car, which is, I assume, just a giant THE on wheels. Dude, the THE car would be the best comic book car ever. But you know what else I noticed? What? There are three dads who didn't get fully dressed to go to the car. <laughs> so there are three potentially... Either robed or non-robed dads out, out and about. That or they're just not wearing dresses. So, True. Uh, I guess Professor Membrane, the narrator, and Professor Membrian is, uh, are just naked right now. And nobody's batting an eye. Okay. We're not going to provide an image of that, just to let you know. We're just going to provide a giant sensor bar. And uh, also, while we're at it here, here's a picture of a cheeseburger. Hope it makes you hungry. <laughs> All right. Dib, you're grounded for leaving me and walking around naked. But, Dad, I... And now make meaties because you're grounded, son. Zim, this is all your fault! I don't know what you're talking about. Ah! The end. Woo! So that happened. So that was an etching in my soul. Um... Yeah. Wow. Um... Let's just start by the, with saying that the author posted this in such tiny font that when I converted this to a Windows uh, or a Microsoft Word thing, I had to put it up to 180 degrees to read it legibly. 180 magnification, yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. And then this is what it's like normally. It's just, I can't read this. Yeah, dude, that's... It's like Arabic, and now it's this. I can't read this. Well, if you zoom out to 10%, of course it's not going to be able to be read. And I can't read it now. Uh, I don't know what... All right, there we go. Whoa! <laughs> it's at 500% and I still can't read it because it's not English. <laughs> it kind of isn't. So, I think it's time for our critique. Let's just let's just get this out of the way so that way my soul can just stop being on fire. All right. Because it um, hurts. As far as critiques go, um, uh, mm. I would say that grammar was a pretty big issue in this one. I think that... Since this story didn't actually use any punctuation besides a colon before a line. And a couple question marks here and there. Which I would argue doesn't count as substantial um, grammar at all and use of punctuation. Um, that was that made it almost impossible to understand. Speaking of colon, give lines a character. I mean, colon is not only one of the least popular characters, but in all seriousness, 
Come on. You, the most important part of a script is to know who says what. Even if it's a bad script, you need to know who's talking. Now, right. I can assume that that was supposed to be Professor Mem Bryan who was saying this. Because, yeah. well, it seems like stuff he would say. Right. And all this stuff lines up with his character. But I don't know. There's no way to know for sure. There's nothing there. You shouldn't have to read through the entire story more than once to understand which characters are saying what. Some stories are interesting in the fact that you have to read them more than once to understand the full meaning of the story, not necessarily because they were poorly written, but because they had such a complex theme. But when you don't give lines a specific character, like you don't give a character those lines, basically there's no one there, because that happened multiple times. When I was narrating, I read lines that were definitely not supposed to be the narrator saying that. I believe they're all membrane. Professor membrane, actually. I think they're supposed Um, to be. And all the misspellings are definitely supposed to be membrane. Notice that's the only name he messed up, is membrane. He he said Professor Membrian, colon, the narrator, and Professor Membiran. Right. Um... He never actually used membrane, though. The actual membrane. He used the misspellings and colon and the narrator, but he'd never used them. Um, That, you know, that made it really hard to understand. But I would say if there weren't sentence fragments, if he just added a little more to those sentences, maybe some descriptive things in parentheses outside. Because when you're writing a script, you have the character names and then their lines. And then whenever an action is done, you put it in parentheses right next below or next to lines so having a lot more of those and i don't think this person knew how to write scripts i don't think so which is fine another thing i want to bring up is he touched on this briefly is the sentence fragments are terrible in this i can't i know the general story but i can't tell you any of the details because the sentences are just so i don't even know how to describe it i can't read these i can't understand what they're trying to say yeah. It's indecipherable. It is. It's like, just something I else. don't know that he was running around naked. I don't know that there was, like, steam bath stuff going on. I have no idea any of this stuff because the way they word everything is just terrible. Right. So, I would say just a touch-up on grammar. Maybe have someone read through it that is more experienced with writing. Maybe a teacher. I assume this person was a little younger. Maybe not, though. Maybe. Um, That's hard to say. Invader Zim fans are hard to categorize. Right. Um, I would assume they were younger, just because of kind of how it was written. Yeah. Um, but, so uh, getting a teacher or a mentor involved in specifically the field of English writing would be really helpful. They could read through it and ask you what you mean by certain things. Because um, one of the things that I've struggled with in writing things like novels is I will have something in my head, and when I put it into words, it doesn't make sense to everyone else who's reading it. So, I mean, I don't think I'm quite at the level that this author was at, but it's still important to have someone read through it and ask you, hey, what do you mean by this? So it can be clarified. And at the least, the very, very minimum, the character portrayal was not awful. I mean, it wasn't great, but it wasn't bad either. Right. I would say it was, would you say it was pretty loyal to the characters? Uh, not. I wouldn't say it was anything that stands out, but it didn't actively betray them like Arnold's Big Day. Right. Arnold's Big Day was something that just had no idea how to make any of the characters act. This had the general idea, and though it didn't do anything special with it, it didn't betray anything. So it's a perfect middle road. Not yeah. great, not bad. Uh, but this fan fiction was bad, don't get me wrong, but it's just that... Just the, the character, character portrayal. Yeah, the character portrayal. Right. And the thing is also, the story is, I guess, salvageable because it's so basic and kind of bare bones. I guess you can fill it up with a lot of stuff. I mean, a lot of Zim stories were created with what if Zim went to X or what if Zim and Dib did X. Right. There's a lot of things like that and a lot of shows that do that. So there is some potential here. There's a lot of limitless potential that I don't think the author either took advantage of or maybe even knew about. Because this might have been their first. I don't know. Yeah, potentially. We don't know a lot about this author. No. Um, it'll be interesting just to see what this story would have become if it had better grammar, if characters were given proper lines and that the narrator wasn't reading character names, and uh, just if they were allowed to have their creative reign because they did understand the characters at a very basic level. At so least I, they clearly watched the show unlike right. last time. So with that in mind, I think we're going to wrap up the critique. I think... 
I think the, we said everything that needs to be said, the, except for this. Taco Bell is a restaurant. That's all I need to say. All right, fair enough. Thank you for watching Fantastic Fictioners. I hope you had a great time. Don't choke on a chalupa. Don't do that. That would be bad. Preferably enchiladas if you're going to choke. Just kidding. Don't choke. See you guys later. <laughs>